Good morning. How is everyone doing? If you're finding me for the first time, my name is Penny. I come here five to six days a week. My goal is to inspire you, to encourage you. I hope you can listen and learn one or two things that is going to help you to live a life with purpose. So, if you have a daughter, if you have a, a, a sister, if you have a, an auntie, if you have a woman in your life that is interested or has thought of uh, choosing to start a family, you need to listen in. So I'm talking to the, all the brides out there. If you're married, come and sit in with me. If you're planning your wedding, come sit in with me. And if you have someone who's planning to get married, share this video. So I started, I always have to start to tell you who I am so that way you understand where I'm coming from. My name is Penny, right? Let me move my nice dress, right? Today I am dressed as a beautiful bride. I, I have been married. I've been married for 29 years right now. I, I have been married three times, okay? The first marriage I was married was traditional marriage where my husband went to his... Uh, to, I, I asked, I, like I forced myself to say, tell your family to go to my family. I, so... Meaning, I married myself, meaning I, he didn't initiate it. I'm the one who said, if you want to marry me, because he, he told me he wants to marry me. Uh, actually, I was engaged uh, six months into the relationship. So I said to him, once you've given me the ring, you need to tell your family members that you're, you know, you're marrying me. So he sent his parents, and his parents went to my village, and I was married traditionally. That's the first marriage. The second marriage, I was married... Uh, with the mayor of our town, we had a wedding in the house. The mayor came, and I, I on my Valentine's Day, I wore my red dress, and he wore his black suit, and we were legally married for America. I waited to have a, a formal wedding in Kenya because where I came from, or the Seven Day Adventist Church, the the, the big picture behind a, a wedding was for the two families to meet. When you marry someone, the only chance they are going to uh, be able to see each other was uh, when, you know, on the wedding day. So we uh, legally did that in, um, in Kenya, and we had a little over 500 uh, guests. It was, a, it was a simple wedding, plenty of food and music. We didn't have much. We didn't do speeches, nothing, because we had been married for uh, such a long time. Now, on the third time when I got married, I had a, a white dress, but my white dress wasn't pure. It had a shash. It had a, a, a purpose, a lavender or lilac shash, because I wasn't pure. And I want to talk to you brides today, because when we get married, we are pure. When you meet a man and you want to get married, you're, the man is looking at you as pure as I am. And you're looking at a man who is wearing a black suit. Back in the day, men wore suits, because you know, black suits when they got married. Now, they've changed the colors. The third time I got married, my husband was wearing... A, a white uh, suit because you know what he was already pure he already had the children so he didn't the black in him was already out so ladies some of you are getting into relationships or some of you are getting married without thinking so much about what you're getting into a woman is pure a woman gives light a woman is is is, is a very special person and a woman is your mother the person that gave you life and this is how most of us are we come into life pure clean Going into the marriage, when we got, get married, the man is looking at a woman and saying, I have found a clean linen. I hope this linen stays this way. Um, a woman is looking at a man in most cases, you know, by the time you're planning the wedding, that this man is really dark and slow and everything. I am going to make sure that I put this man in his, his right place and give him a family and make a home. Men don't come pure into the marriage. Women come pure into the marriage because that's why the Bible says, who has found a wife has found a good thing. And women, most of us, we, we, it's, within a very short time, we forget that. We don't, we forget we were pure. Because we know what of something we call domestication. Meaning, we, 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 we get distorted. We are no longer the beautiful pride, bride we were. We were no longer the woman that we thought that we were when we entered marriage. So I have notes for you. And I want you to grab your, your glass of wine, right? Cheers to you. And I have my kettle here. You need to refill your, your wine glass or your tea 
this uh, kettle was given to me by my friend Car Carol Nelson from Texas when I first, you know, visited them in Texas. And this is, you always have to have a standby of, of, to refill your heart. Because a lot of you are losing yourselves. The beautiful bride you were, you've lost yourself because you're not refilling your glass. So, grab your wine glass or your cup of tea and cheers. Let's, let, let us talk about this. Okay. There is something we call domestication. Where we, are, we grow up and we are taught that this is how a woman is supposed to be. There is how we grow up and we are taught this is how a man is supposed to be. We, we, we are taught what is expected of a woman. We are taught what is expected of a man in society. And and when we don't meet these expectations, we start beating ourselves. We lose ourselves. And I have put notes for you, the bride, the female, the daughter, to, to remind yourself how pure you were before you got into this marriage. Remember the day you got married. Some of you are not even married. You're just sitting there waiting to be married. But you need to remind yourself who you are. Call yourself into a meeting. We are going through so much because once we get married, we, the in-laws beat us up, the husband beat us up, the children beat us up. We forget that we were pure. You lose yourself with, before you know it, you no longer know who you are. So my dear sister, drink water. Okay? Number one, what have you been made to believe? You've been made to believe that a woman is a wo someone who's supposed to endure suffering. Any African woman you talk to, the ones before, the ones that are right now, the ones to come, they're going to tell you that you're supposed to suffer for your family. We have been made to believe that we need to suffer for our family. Okay? We forget about our dreams right before we got married, right before we had children. We forget who we are. We lost ourselves in the marriage. We lost ourselves into motherhood. We forget we were pure. Okay? We are taught to allow people to judge us. We are taught to allow us to judge ourselves. We are taught to feel little. When somebody belittles you, we are taught to accept it until it becomes normal. That is how we have been taught by our parents. If I have a problem and my husband has called me a goten on BSA, say you dog, you this, I go and tell my mom that my husband has called me a goat, a dog, or whatever. My mom is going to tell me, oh, you know what? Just, it is okay. Just be strong for your family. We have been taught to suffer. We have been taught to be to be judged. And we have been taught to accept that. Okay? We have been taught to be rewarded by suffering. I remember people praising my mom for enduring suffering from my dad. I met women when I went back to Kenya who clearly told me, oh, your mother suffered. She's a hero. They were calling my mother a hero. My mother never said a word. We are taught to be praised because we are enduring suffering. The women who are praised the most are the women who have the worst husbands in the community. People will praise them and say, you know, oh no, Doro is good, she is strong. You are called strong because you are suffering. You are rewarded for suffering. You embrace for suffering. Your in-laws will love you because they, they know their son is bad. Your in-laws will embrace you because they know this woman is enduring our brother. But if you're married to one of those nice boys, the in-laws don't like you. If you have a nice husband, the in-laws dislike you. They even are angry that you married their nice brother. They hate you if you have one of those nice men. Okay? We let society dictate what it is okay and what is not okay. We let society make us feel that if I divorce my husband, oh, I'm going to be a useless person. We have let society dictate what we want. We have let society dictate our wishes. We have let society dictate our dreams. Okay? We are pushed to normalize abuse. The beautiful, beautiful bride you are, you are, you forget. You see how nice I am. I'm put together today. I even put, I put uh, uh, blush, the lilac blush that I like. People 
are going to come my husband is going to come and tell me i'm ugly his the sisters will say you are you are terrible the brothers will say you don't look good the father will say i hate this woman look how beautiful i am we have allowed society to tell us we are not beautiful and we start believing we have let society to start telling us we are not fit for the man that we married and we believe that i want you to take a minute okay i know most of you have watched a movie i want you to take a minute and imagine yourself walking into a movie theater and you sit down and you start watching a movie and that movie you're watching is going to be a movie of your parents start with that watch the movie of your parents from the beginning until the end when you finish that movie i want you to walk over to your own theater from the time you turned even start at 18 or even at the time you, as long as you can remember yourself i can remember myself when i was in kindergarten stella good morning today i'm a bride beautiful pure i'm a virgin i've never had sex with any man i am pure this is how we go into the marriage pure okay if you can remember yourself from kindergarten when you went to school the memory that you have i want you to go take a seat and sit in your own movie theater and watch your own movie up to today how is that movie of yours going to be and then i want you to visualize if you have children your children stepping out and and becoming the age they are able to watch a movie to watch a movie of their mother to watch a movie of their father at what point did you decide that a man is going to belittle you uh, 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 in-laws are going to belittle you society is going to belittle you for your movie to change you've watched a movie until your heart drops look at that movie when your husband started telling you you're useless when you turn from this beautiful bride to a useless woman when did you turn from the woman that had a vision and mission when did you turn from that woman who had dreams i brought myself to america i met my husband here and i had dreams when did i stop having those dreams so i can succumb to what my husband thought at what point in that movie and then imagine your grandchildren watching your movie what kind of movie are you playing out as a bride ask yourself my movie of polygamy is painful my movie of polygamy is it, it has a lot of bitterness my father had four wives 21 children and half a little over half the children did not like that setting and why some of them ended up marrying two three wives again it's because they never played the movie of being in a polygamous family if you play that movie of your parents where your father has four wives 21 children you are not going to go into polygamy polygamy is the most dangerous thing it continues to be the most dangerous thing it is the easiest way to kill your children when you put your children in a situation where they are sharing a father play that polygamy movie and watch yourself look at yourself i play myself every time and every time i play myself in a movie when i realize that my father had four women to himself when i realize that my some of my siblings were getting better treatment than me that movie was not a very good movie my heart dropped okay in that movie one you watch that movie you're going to create your own movie you need to change how you want your movie to go i need to remind my husband that i'm from nyando chevere i went to kisi primary i went to eronge boarding school i went to sironga girls high school i came to america he met me in a club somewhere dancing having a good time he looked at me and said this woman is beautiful i don't know what he was looking for but when he started talking to me oh i thought he wanted to have a beautiful family with me i did not know that his intention would be to put me down you don't know that I need to remind myself that you know what before I met my husband there is a movie that was playing I'm asking you the beautiful bride this kissy thing bride and pride is two different things you know pride and pride they they go together your beautiful bride when did you decide that it's okay now for your husband to distort you for your in-laws to distort you for the society to distort you when did you decide 
to remove to put your stock value down and let me ask you who decides what's wrong and what's right for those of us who met men here in america how did this man even know i got here who told you what is right and what is wrong your parents the society your co-workers People are coming and they're dictating you, they're telling you what's right and wrong so you can put up with abuse. When did you lose yourself to society? When did you lose yourself to your husband? Okay? Victims are always blamed for whatever situation they find themselves in. I need to fill my cup. A woman is in an abusive relationship and then now society is blaming her. Her family is blaming her. Everybody is blaming her for marrying a terrible man. The victims turn out to be victimized for the suffering that they are enduring because they chose marriage. My beautiful bride, when did you decide that you needed to be that bride that was going to be sat down and be blamed for whatever had happened to you? You made a, a wrong one wrong turn. What do you do? You recalculate. There is something called recalculating. In Ekegusi, and you know I love to speak in Ekegusi because I learned English when I was like 9 or 10 years old. And I'm going to break away from English, I speak Ekegusi, then I'll come back and translate. Ekere mbule ego chukotua, ekere oaneke rite mitu mabi ya wisko, no obegete mitu mabi ya wisko, kwaneke ire chingene, kwaneke ire ongo, no obegete mitu mabi ya wisko, tete kwaneke. Ake ake ira, e e mbule ga ya chaka kora, mara ya chaka goncho kama, Okay. I'm going to go back to English. When we grew up in the village, we used to put the corn outside. We put the millet outside. We put the beans outside. When you see the sun and the cloud is starting to get cloudy, what you do, you start gathering the corn. You put it in. You start gathering the, the millet. A, a, a woman that is wise, that is, that is our mothers, starts gathering and removing everything before the rain pours down. Once you get into a marriage and you know you've got into a marriage, it is your job, it is your responsibility to look at your mare, to look at the sky and see the signs of rain. Why are you going to stay there until the rain beats you and then you die and leave your children? Because now your husband, his family, the society, they've decided to put you down. You are looking at the, you can see it's about to rain and your corn is there. Your millet is there. Your beans are there. Why are you going to wait until it's pouring hard for you to pack your stuff and remove yourself from the rain? Who told you that it is okay to wait and stay in the rain? The rain is going to beat you. And in Kisi, when those days when it used to rain, it just didn't rain. It rained hailstone. When the hailstones rain, right, it's followed by thunderstorms and everything. You're going to be out there until you die and leave your children because of stress. Until you die because you're, you're putting up with the in-laws who are... You want to be there and then what's going to happen to your movie? Are you asking yourself? Okay? Remind yourself that you're beautiful. Remind yourself that you are pure. Yeah? <laughs> Remind yourself that you are pure. Okay? 25 years is that you should have started seeing when, when the clouds are getting bad. And even 30 years, you know people change. Mental health, people can change. If your husband is changing after 30 years, you need to look at the clouds and see, is it time for me to step out just for your own sake? You don't have to endure suffering because now that's what you have been do domesticated to believe. You need to look and say, when is it time for me to start gathering the corn and put the corn away? Okay? You don't have to pay for your mistakes of marrying a bad person for the rest of your life. Okay? My beautiful bride, you can pay your, for your mistake one time. But let me tell you, most of the time we don't pay for these mistakes one time. We pay two times. We pay three times. We pay four times. Most of the time we pay for these mistakes over and over because people are constantly reminding us. Our children are reminding us. Our spouses are reminding us. Your husband is telling you you are a useless woman. 
I should have not married you. I wish I married the other woman. You are nobody. I wish I did that. Not only you, you're beating yourself for choosing the wrong person. Somebody is reminding you how you made the mistake. So you're not the only one just suffering. You're suffering because you're carrying everybody's burden. Okay? You're not leaving your abusive marriage because people are going to judge you. You're not leaving your abusive marriage because you're afraid of what the community is going to say. They are going to gossip me. You are not leaving your abusive marriage because you're thinking, what if my father finds out? What if my mother finds out? So you are hiding because you know what? You want to please the community. You want to please people that you are still married. You are pretending that everything is okay in your movie. You want everybody to think that your movie is going action, beautiful. Everything is going fine. So you stay in abuse. Because you know what? You don't want people to find out that the movie has gone south. Until you lose your life, we bury you and you leave your children. Okay? Hell is not where we die and go. Because nobody has been to hell and come back and told us how hell looks like. Nobody has been to heaven and came back and told us how heaven looks like. But a lot of us, we are living in hell right here. And it's not, it's not us who are, who are like living in hell by, by whatever we are doing. It is what we are allowing people to do to us. It was, it's what your daughter is allowing the husband to do. It's what your job is you're allowing your job to do. Hell is right here. We have not seen it. We don't know heaven. But hell is right here. <clears throat> okay? Most of us, we don't know how to say no. Your father-in-law will call with 20 requests. Now we have this, especially in our Kisi community, we have these in-laws whose job is to beg. Not even Kisi's only. I think it's across the board. So your father-in-law is calling, he needs $4,000. Your father, your mother-in-law is calling, she needs $3,000. We have this, this is again culture. We have been tra trained that when these parents ask for money, especially the in-laws, even if it means for your children to sleep hungry, you're going to starve your children so you can give your in-law money. Why are we doing that? Because we've been conditioned as a women not to say no. Right? Even for those ones who are married, your husband, especially if you're married to an addict, a man who's an addict, who is addicted to sex, which is something the Africans don't even know it exists. There are men, you can never give them enough sex. One, two, three, they can do it three times, and then they still go and, they, and, they, and they ask, get it from your friend, and they go, yeah. you know, when we are marrying this man, none of us was even aware that we are marrying addicts, because there was no way to test a man to know if he's a sex addict or he's not. So we, you're married to a man who every day, two, three times, he's asking you for sex. And you know, when you tell him, you know what? Oh, no, today, they get mad. Oh, no, we, can't, we did it yesterday, wait for another day, they get mad. We are, we are, we are brides that don't have no in our, our vocabulary. How can, let me drink water. How can you be a woman who's choosing to have a family and you don't have no in your vocabulary? All the rubbish, all the nonsense that you're told, you just say yes. How is that going to, how are you going to be a human being when you, everything you're told is a yes? We need to have no, okay? The reason why we don't have no, we are working so hard so we can be accepted. In terms and conditions, I'm working so hard so my husband's family can accept me. I'm working so hard so people on social media can accept me. I'm working so hard so the community can accept me. I don't want to say no. We are seeking ac acceptance. And in the process of seeking acceptance, we are putting up with nonsense. That is draining us. That is leading us into depression. You have to say no. Not everybody is going to accept you. And for those of you who have adult children, you know even your own children are not going to accept or subscribe to any of those things you are telling them. So if you can't tell no to your community, how are you going to tell your children no? 
You're looking for acceptance from the wrong people who are running you into depression. You forgot you were beautiful bride. You forgot how pure you were before you had sex and had children. You forgot how you had it together until your husband felt the need to marry you. You forgot the, the bonga points. We call them bonga points you had. For somebody to decide that you are suitable to be a bride. A beautiful, pure bride, all in white. No, you are not distorted, nothing. You forget all that. Now you can't say no because you, don't, you want people to accept you. They are not going to accept you. Whether you say no or you don't say no. We stay in relationships because we don't want people to hear that our marriage is ended. We stay in relationships because we are saying for our, the sake of the children. And yet we are raising children who are angry and bitter. Okay? Let me tell you, my beautiful bride, let me sip water. We keep accusing people of abusing us. We keep saying, he did this, she did that, blah, blah. The only abuse, abuser, and the abuse that you have, it is the abuse that you're allowing and you're giving yourself. We, the beautiful brides, we are our number one abusers. The moment you decide to settle for this abuse, you have given people approval and you have told them, this beautiful bride from Nyando Chibere, my husband, Abu, moving forward, I want you to tell me I'm stupid. It is okay for you to tell me I'm stupid. It is okay for you to tell me I'm not beautiful. It is okay to tell me I'm, no, I'm a nobody. The number one abuser of a beautiful bride is the bride herself. When did the rain started beating you? When the rain started beating you? And you started allowing people to give you the definition of what a good wife is, of what a good mother is, of what a good friend is, of what a good I don't know what is. We allowed us for people to define us and give us the definition of who we were, we were before we met them. You are your number one abuser. Yeah? You are a beautiful bride. Doro, you have to write that down. Okay? You abuse yourself by allowing everything that is coming to your way every day and you let it happen. Some of us, and I'm one of them, my mother's movie was a painful movie. And I told myself, this is not the movie I want our children to watch, children that I didn't have. The movie, some of us, our movie was too graphic. Some of you have a graphic movie. Some of you had a beautiful movie, but you have chosen to create a horror movie. Some of us had a romantic movie. We had parents that modeled to us what it means to be in a healthy relationship. And yet some of us have created a horror movie for our children. When did you, lo when did you lose the memo that you were a beautiful bride? When did you forget that you had your, your, your eyeshadow for the wedding? When did you forget that you had this? When did you forget that you had lipstick? When did you forget that you had your earrings? When did you forget that, you know, you went and searched for that jewelry? When did you forget that you went and took your girlfriends and you found that dress? When did you forget? When did you forget you're a beautiful bride? Me? Hey. <laughs> Let me tell you guys. And that's why I speak here on Facebook. I have never forgotten the movie that I watched in the Omweni family. The movie is fresh. The movie is painful. It has a good part. It has a sad part. Penina is not going to forget that Omweni movie. There is no, that movie, if any of you could sit and watch my family movie, you will understand why anytime 
any time a signal, a sick, like a small signal, there's a time, you know men are men, right? There's a time my husband sends signals of authority. <laughs> hey, my friends. Hey. Hmm. If you watch my movie and my husband, you're going to laugh. And then they give you the chemical. If they show you what, how my, my brain is acting, the chemical and brain activity going on in my brain, when my husband is exercising his authority as the head of this man, all my antennas go up quick. And you know, I know I'm in a movie for my children. And, and then I tell myself, Penina, from Chevere, you need to do screening quick. I have a couple seconds. I have seconds, literally. It cannot be minutes. I have seconds to screen what my husband said. To know if it is a positive thing, he's coming from a good place, or what, or he's coming from an abusive and controlling space. I, I'm quick, quick. My antennas are like, what did you say? Half the time, if the antennas tell me that that is abusive, the next question I ask, are you talking to me? I always confirm, because I'm like, oh, it's 29 years. That question comes every time I'm in doubt. I check. I check. And the question I check with is, if he's talking to me, that, that is the cue. You talking to me? Oh, what do you say? That means the antenna registered either control or it, I, no. And I'm a, I, I call myself an artist because I saw my mother. And then I have a couple seconds to decide how I'm continuing with that conversation. I'm very much alert. Oh, okay. If it's coming the wrong way, I have the calm because now it, I need to filter this information. I have the calm to redirect as needed. Redirect as needed. And that's why, by the way, if you watch my movie, and as I speak, if you ever watch my movie, if you enter my movie theater, if I was abused, I don't know. Maybe I'm being abused and I don't know. I'm not aware. So when you're not aware, we're going to give you a pass. If you're being abused, or if you're living in abusive and unbearable circumstances and you're not aware like me in fact me i'm not aware this every day is a good day i am not aware of any abuse that i can tell you the only thing is the work is overload and again that's even me who overloaded because my husband wanted two children then i said uh -uh, where we come from we push like four i was pushing four because my mother had eight yeah so it's possible that I'm overworked, but it's something that I chose. He could have been okay with two children, but I pushed the... the so I'm working double. That's, that's a choice. I'm aware. We accept abuse until we start accepting it. We think it is okay. And then now, finally... <laughs> there are times even me, honestly, I'm just... Let me just tell you anyway. Let me sip water first. <laughs> given my mouth situation, given who I am, and that one I want to be with you, but you know you have to gauge yours. There are times I'm feeling, hey, I'm even lucky this man married me. <laughs> who was going to tolerate this woman with a mouth like this? So even me, and ladies, I'm with you, those ones who finally start feeling like he did you a favor to marry you. Even me, I feel that way. I eh, because I am rough on the ground. Then I'm like, eh, with this mouth, this guy tolerated me, and now I have four children. My children never have a beard, and you know my mother told me, you don't talk until your children are big. But me, I was talking, talking. 
So now, there is a part of me that says, oh, in fact, this guy has tolerated me. So when I say that, I do that because it's the easy way for me to also forgive him for his shortcomings. Why? Because am I married to an angel? No. Is the angel married to an angel? No. We are two people that chose to marry each other that have challenges. Are you looking for a, a, a beautiful, handsome man that is clean, that doesn't have challenges? No. That's not what we are looking for. This, my husband, has challenges. This, Penina, has challenges. So, yes, he actually did a favor to marry you because you are so stupid. That he married someone who is stupid that's putting up with abuse. He's a favor he did. To marry a woman that is not wise. To marry a woman that has decided not to make a beautiful movie for herself and her children. So when he tells you you're stupid, yeah, you come into terms and you're like, I'm actually stupid. How are you not stupid when you are pure like this? And now you've come into terms and you've accepted that you're not the beautiful bride. Why do stupid people do that? You accepted but you know what? He did me a favor. <laughs> talking, talking. I don't stop. This mouth of mine only stops when it's sleeping because, and I sleep good. In fact, I'm one of, if you do a study, I sleep very good because I talk everything. And then by 10 p.m., I sleep and I wake up at 6. In fact, I need an alarm to, to wake up because I talk, talk, talk. So if this my husband tolerated me, I don't want to reveal his things that I'm tolerating. And I'm enduring him, right? But I came there with a vision and mission. I entered the marriage with a vision and mission and vision. You are telling yourself, we must make this thing happen. And that's why I tell the women, the woman who now wants to take over the polygamy thing, now the one who wants to take over the husband, my husband or your husband, they should be ready to know that I've been grandfathered in. He, they are going to live with my terms and conditions because now we have children. Because you know what, ladies? You lost yourself over a man if you have boy, boy children and you're not praying for them to good, get, get good spouses. You're, you're wasting your time. You need to pray for your son to get a woman that is strong, to get a woman that has sense, to get a woman that loves herself, not a woman that you're going to run down. You need a woman that can hold a home together in case that your son drops dead. I need to be able to be functional in this home with or without a man. A, a strong woman that knows her place in society. Now you've become stupid. You're sitting there. You're saying, I don't know what to do. I, I, they say, they say, they say. You have let society decide for you who you want to be. When you decided to lose your virginity, when you decided to remove your underwear, when you decided to go into a room with a man, when you decided to go without birth control to conceive, when you decided to move from your parents' house so you can move in with another man, like me, I left 12 hours away from my home to his home. Did you call the community? Did you call everybody to, to tell them, you know what, hey, I'm removing my underwear, come. Hey, I'm conceiving. Hey, come. Who did you call to that meeting? So you can tell them that you are losing your virginity. The people you called to tell, to announce. To announce to that moving forward, I'm losing my virginity to James. Hey, James is, is coming to break my virginity. Those people that you announced to, that you are giving your body to a man, the day you started having sex with a man, call all of them again. Tell them that now James is abusing you. Call, call all of them. We are so quick, 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 quick to call everybody. To tell on this man. Because you know what? We decided to include everybody in our marriage. We decided what society is expecting. We decided what our mother is expecting. We decided what our fathers want for us. You forgot what you wanted for yourself. You actually 
met that man by yourself. You set your own mission. You set your own vision. You set your own goals. Nobody sets those goals for you. And I want to remind you, your beautiful bride. Very beautiful. In fact, me, me, what I know. If, if you ask me at 50 now, what I am sure. I'm not even 99%. I'm 100% sure today. If I just take this picture of mine and put it on. Nowadays, people don't meet in clubs like I met my husband in a club. Nowadays, we meet online. If I put this profile in a dating website, me, tomorrow, I'll get a few calls. That is the kind of bride I am. I believe I'm very beautiful. In fact, I'm like a 100% sure. There is no doubt. I'm going to package myself again, remove myself from the clearance rack, and put myself in a nice display. If you go and see this kettle in the shop, you're likely to pick this kettle. You don't have to necessarily be remarried. You don't have to be necessarily find another person. But losing yourself in an abusive relationship because you want to please the community. Today is the Sabbath day. I want to remind you that you are a beautiful bride. Your breasts could have fallen. Your stomach could have sagged. You could have gray hair like I have gray hair. You could have wrinkles. You could have gained so much weight because of all the things that come with being a woman or being a wife or being a mother. But don't forget yourself. Don't lose yourself to society. Don't lose yourself. We love our children so much. We don't want our children to be lost in the name of marriage, in, 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 in the name of society. My beautiful bride, I come to you this morning. I want to tell you that you need to sit down. Package yourself again in your nice, beautiful white outfit. Right? See? I look like I'm getting married today. Package yourself. Put on your earring. Put on your lipstick. Put your eyeshadow. Right? Get your eyebrows done, right? Put your hair together. And remind yourself that you are beautiful. You are your mother's daughter. You are your father's daughter. You are that lady in the community that the community had hope for when you were growing up in Nyandochevere Sabbath School. I was a woman that the village looked up to and said, this woman is going to grow into greatness. I was in the church choir. I was in the pathfinder. I went to Sironga Girls with my head high. I'm like, America is, is a destination. How am I going to get here and forget my movie? I was in boarding school, like in class six, focused to succeed so I can have a bright future. What happened to the bright future that you wanted? Why did the, the future become dark? Why, did you, why are you allowing people to make your future dark in the name of marriage? You work so hard to package yourself so you could look presentable for your man, a man to ask you out, and they ask you out, they make you a wife, and now you're settling for less. When did you stop and say, I've given up, anything can happen to me right now, I don't care. When? Why? You are created in God's own image. You're the beautiful bride you are. The day you got married. If you did come, we stay. Hmm, mistakes. The mistake is not the mistake. The mistake is staying with the mistake. <laughs> Making a mistake, we are all human. But the mistake is staying in that mistake. And my beautiful brides, I come to you this morning on a Sabbath day. Like I said in Ekeusi, look at the clouds. If the clouds look like it's going to rain, gather your belongings and bring them inside before it rains. Don't let it rain on your food because you won't have food to eat. There are a lot of lessons that can be learned from animals. 
and a squirrel in America, a squirrel is one of them. A squirrel gathers all their fruits and whatever their nuts, whatever when the season is good. And then they go put it somewhere. And during the winter, they are going to eat that food. My dear sisters, you need to become a squirrel. Gather your belongings. Gather everything. And by the way, when you, when you work on yourself, you're going to allow your abusive husband to get a chance to work on himself. Holding a, an abusive man hostage or keeping an abusive man, you're not doing him any favor because when your children grow up, you're going to pack your things and leave that man. Don't wait. Don't do that. Give the man a chance. Maybe he can reform so he can find another woman that's going to take him. Some of these men, they need to be left for other women so they can evaluate themselves and know they have a problem. Instead of covering for them and hiding for them and protecting for them, and then eventually you pack your things and run away the way our mothers did from Kenya. A lot of kissy mothers ran away from Kenya and left their men there. We don't want history to repeat itself. Some of these fathers are in the village suffering without anything. They are living with workers. Their wives are here in America. Because you know what? They took the suffering so much and they kept saying, wait for my kids to go to college. Once their children went to UK, moved to different countries, our mothers packed their things and left our fathers for suffering. No. Leave them now. Okay. Like a good wife. I have to get off social media. Like a good wife. I have a basketball, a, a game coming up for my son. Like a good wife. I should have something called discipline and self-control. And I'm, I'm a good wife to my definition. What I'm thinking a good wife should do. I wanted to remind you guys. Let your children not take away your beauty. Let your husband not take away your beauty. Let your in-laws not take away your beauty. Let your friends on social media take away your beauty. The society has made it possible for women to be put down. And once you accept to be put down, you are not only allowing people to abuse you, you are abusing yourself. You are doing self-harm. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Share this video. Invite your friends. And guess what? Always remind yourself. You are a beautiful bride. Right? Abuse is only abuse. Depending on what we allow people to do to us. They can say whatever they want to say. But whatever we allow and feed into it and it leads us to depression is what's the problem. And guess what? If nobody is talking about you, if nobody is gossiping you, if nobody is not saying negative things, then you are not living. There are people who are not living. People only talk about people who are living. We need to live. You are only breathing and living because you are doing something, including walking away from abuse. Don't normalize abuse. Because you know what? You are what? Beautiful bride. Remember your wedding? Your people came, danced, gave you gifts, and said cheers. Cheers is what? Cheers is cheers. Don't allow abuse. Put your antennas like this. So you can smell abuse a mile away. When it comes, stop it right away. Redirect it. These, our men, are people's boys. You have boys too. You have brothers. You have cousins. Let us not allow our men to abuse us just because we want society to praise us. You don't get rewarded. There is no reward for suffering. There is no award for suffering. Nobody gets an award for suffering. They will praise you verbally. But there is no award for suffering. There is nothing you gain from suffering. There is no reward for being in a bad marriage because you know what, at the end of the day they are going to give you a million dollars. No, nobody is giving you nothing. They are just going to start taking your medication. Cheers.